Hi everyone, this is Neil Reiter, also known as the Wax Whisperer. Thank you for joining me in my latest video. We have here a patient who attended with an extremely itchy and irritable left ear. They've been suffering from problems in both ears since, I believe, um, late 2022, so almost five to six months. And they picked up a couple of ear infections at that time. And they saw their GP who uh, prescribed some medication and advised they've got earwax in both ears. Um, in the UK at the moment, having your ears cleaned via primary care, so via your doctor's surgery, is extremely difficult. Um, in the part of the UK the patient is from, they are still offering ear irrigation services. The majority of the UK doctors and primary care centres are no longer offering ear care as standard treatment on the NHS. So in that respect, the patient was quite fortunate, but they had to wait several months to have their ears cleaned. They attended and had ear irrigation performed. And they initially performed it in this day left ear, uh, but the patient still felt blocked. So they went back and when they went back, they were told that they've still got wax that's come back and it's very difficult to remove. And they were also told that they've got earwax in the right ear in addition to another ear infection. They were prescribed some antibiotic ear spray in the right ear, but they were advised to have their right ear cleared prior to using the, the antibiotic spray. Otherwise, the spray wouldn't make contact with the, the canal wall because of all the wax. So the patient uh, was at the end of his tether and... It was actually the patient's uh, mum who watches me on YouTube and advised their son to come visit me. They, they travelled quite a, a fair distance, actually. It was a three-hour journey each way. So six hours in total. And the patient um, uh, informed me that prior to attending, so the day before, um, they were uh, binge-watching on my videos on YouTube and just to get a feel of what we do. Um, and they're very grateful for their mum for recommending him to come. So upon attending, I examined their right ear and actually they had no earwax in their right ear. It was just a bit of um, non-occluding soft wax just at the entrance of the ear. I can, however, partly understand why the doctor may have felt it was blocked. The right ear in particular was quite inclined. So you look in the ear, it kind of slopes upwards. Now, all of our ear canals are slightly inclined upwards, but this patient, especially their right ear, is more so. But we could see the eardrum. I did mop, it, mop the right ear up um, as they, they attended, but it didn't need clearing. They had been using the Otomize, um, so that's the antibiotic ear spray that they were prescribed in any case, and it seems to have resolved any problem they had in the right ear. But this left ear was becoming extremely problematic for the patient, extremely itchy, and the patient reported at this moment, this is the region they felt it was really itchy, and you can see just how strongly it did the skin is. I'm peeling it away, it's a thick blanket of dead skin. So just to talk you through this procedure, at the beginning there was some lateral... Um, sticky wax keratin just at the entrance and we managed to remove that and so the blockage I removed almost immediately and we could see the eardrum straight away and the patient's hearing had improved um, at that point however they still had this very thick layer of skin that was lining the whole ear canal and eardrum so we needed to remove this for the patient um, now I've been seeing a lot of dead skin uh, cases recently I, I had one yesterday of a huge, which I uploaded yesterday, should I say, of a huge dead skin plug. So do watch yesterday's video if you're interested in watching that one. Now, this case was slightly different. It wasn't a plug of dead skin. It was a blanket, a thick layer um, of dead skin, just lining the whole ear canal. So I've peeled away all the lateral skin. So this is the skin that's now on the bony part, the medial part. So it did have a slightly narrow ear canal. Um, so it does just reduce the maneuverability of the instrument in the ear. When you've got dead skin like this, you may have seen that I used forceps on a couple of occasions, but the forceps weren't really um, effective in this case. Um, at the beginning, the wax was a bit too soft and, uh, and loose, and the forceps just cut into it as opposed to bringing it away. And this, because the skin so tightly adhered and it's on the eardrum, the forceps just weren't um, effective at bringing this out. So I've had to put some olive oil spray just to lubricate the canal wall and just soften a bit of the skin and I'm now just using the fine end now when you're peeling skin we have to put a lot of force we have to I explained to the patient like double-sided sticky tape um, and it's really strongly adhered to the canal wall so we have to kind of peel it away tear it away and to do that 
we're having to get a suction grip and then lift the dead skin as far away from the canal wall as possible. But when you've got a narrow ear, there's limited space to work in. So I've just got to be careful as I don't want to make contact with the opposite side of the ear canal as I'm trying to peel this away with the sucker. So I'm just loosening it all the way around. I'm going to work here to the back bit and to the front of the ear canal in a moment. So when you peel it all the way around, it just gives you a better chance of removing the plug. I did warn the patient that as I was peeling the skin to, into the centers, I'm trying to bring it into the center all the way around, that I might block their hearing again because you can see now, you can see less of the eardrum. I'm folding the skin down and in the middle. I think I'm going to try forceps again. I don't know if this is the moment or it's a bit later. So I'm just going to the roof of the ear canal. Because the patient's ear canal is extremely inclined, I, was, I had to uh, look upwards into the ear. So I was crouching down and I got the patient to tilt their head in the opposite direction. So it created an angle where I can visualise the top part of the ear canal. And I'm still really just dragging it down, I'm trying to detach it from the canal wall. Underneath, the patient's got a very healthy layer of skin. Now, why has this patient got this thick layer of skin? It could have been... Um, as a result of their previous ear infection that they suffered a few months ago. Quite often when you have an ear infection and you've got discharge and you know, you've got some eczema psoriasis of the ear canal, after you've used some antibiotic ear spray or drops, it crystallizes the outer layer of skin and debris. And almost as it is in this case, it could have been just residue from their previous infection or it could just be this is a naturally occur, occurring problem for the patient. The skin dies and it sheds and it doesn't migrate and it remains attached to the canal wall. So this skin, if it in, in um, for example, my ear, as the skin dies, this is all dead skin, all dead keratin. When it dies, it sheds and it moves sideways out of the ear naturally. And it flakes away. So you have little individual skin cells, epithelial skin cells. But in this case, the skin cells is all all the individual epithelial skin cells are attached still and this skin has failed to migrate and it becomes oxidized and becomes keratinous. It, it, um, most of the skin cells in the, uh, that uh, form the, the skin in the ear canal, 70% are, are keratinocytes, which are skin cells that uh, reproduce. So they undergo a process called mitosis where they, the cell divides and they replicate itself. And um, on the outer layer of skin, the epidermal layer of skin, there's, there's five layers. And the skin, as it replicates itself, it's pushed further away um, towards the surface of the ear canal. So it moves up a layer. And the further the skin layer moves away from the, the surface of the ear canal, it's further away from the periosteum, uh, which supplies the blood and the nutrients. So the skin basically slowly dies. It goes under a process. It replicates itself. It, so the skin, the cell and skin cells, as I said, it, it, it undergoes cell division. It replicates itself. It's pushed further away from the blood supply and nutrients till eventually it's, it's then the outermost layer of the, dead, of the skin that lines the ear canal. We call that the corneum, um, the stratum corneum. So these keratinocytes, um, um, they undergo a process called cornification. So they start off as keratinite skin cells. And when they reach the surface of the ear canal and they die and shed, they become cornicites. So cornicites are essentially individual skin cells that have died and they fill themselves with um, keratin. All the intracellular fluid is no longer present. All the organelles within the cells decompose. They no longer are functional. Uh, and keratin is there for a reason. We have keratin on our fingernails, hair strand. It's hydrophobic, so it helps to repel water. Water is bad for the ear. Water can provide warm, damp, moist uh, conditions, perfect incubators for bacteria and fungal colonization and reproduction. Um, and they re help to reflect harmful UV rays from the sun. So I'm just using uh, the Johnson horn just to get some of this dead skin near the entrance. So the patient can hear significantly better. Importantly for them, the itch is now resolved. I've advised to 
the patient that if they do develop dry skin again, it could just be that the ear is not secreting enough sebum or um, an oily sweat from the um, ceremonious gland. So they can instill medical grade olive oil as an artificial oil to help lubricate and moisturize and hydrate the skin that lines the ear canal. So that's the dead skin and all the debris I removed from the patient's ear. Well, the majority of a lot of it got suctioned up. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video, guys. Take care.